Hey, welcome back. This is our second part to our introduction to thermodynamics. I'm going to put a link to part one in case you missed that up above where I talk about temperature and internal energy, whereas this lesson is on thermal equilibrium and thermal shock. So let's go ahead and get to it. All right, and so next up, I want to talk about stuff that you have noticed before. So what happens when you leave like a hot drink or a hot coffee out for a long time and you don't drink it? Well, over time the coffee cools down right in fact it's going to come to room temperature and believe it or not the room is going to get slightly warmer so i want you to think about why that is in terms of energy why is that so where is energy going from and going to think about that for a moment all right and next up what would happen if you had an ice cream and you take too long to eat it well it's going to start to melt and if you somehow dropped the ice cream let's say and didn't clean it up just left it on the ground if you allowed enough time to pass like maybe a day or something that ice cream would come to the same temperature as its surroundings and believe it or not its surroundings would be slightly cooler as a result of that so again i want you to start thinking about where is energy going into the system or out of the system and the fact that they will come to the same temperature if given enough time all right, well, this concept is a really, really important one in this topic of thermodynamics. Objects will come to thermal equilibrium. If they come into contact with each other, like you have a higher temperature and a lower temperature object, you bring them together, kind of like a hot cup of coffee and the surrounding air around it, let's say. Over time, energy is going to leave the hot coffee and go into the surrounding air. That is a form of energy we're going to call heat. And we're going to talk a lot more about heat but it's going to be randomized thermal energy that will leave from a higher temperature substance to a lower temperature substance. And if we allow for enough time, objects will come to thermal equilibrium, and eventually there's going to be no temperature difference between them. All right, so let's go back to these two examples here and think about this. What direction is heat going to flow, into the system or out of the system here? Well, heat is going to flow out of the system here into its surroundings. So the surroundings are going to gain energy and the cup of coffee is going to lose energy over time. How about this example right here? Is heat going to flow into the system or out of the system? Well, heat's going to flow into the system, correct? And that's because the surrounding air has a higher temperature than the ice cream itself. And we'll talk more about this later, but it's because of these little collisions with air molecules have more energy as they collide with the molecules of the ice cream. And if you can think of pool balls, the billiard balls just colliding, the ones with the higher energy are crashing in over here. And these are like the slower pool balls to begin with. They start to move faster until all the pool balls, you could say, are essentially moving at the same speed. And that's what we mean by thermal equilibrium. All right, one more quick idea I want to talk about, and this is called thermal expansion or thermal shock, depending on the situation. And I want to bring something up. This glass was broken just by pouring water into the glass, and it wasn't like pre-damaged somehow. Someone didn't take a chisel to it or anything like that. So my question is, how do you think that this glass broke if you just poured in boiling water into a glass? Normally, glasses are designed to handle this, but this glass could not. So why did it break? It turns out that substances will expand as they gain temperature. This happens even to solids. So if you pour boiling water into a cup, occasionally cups cannot handle that. So this concept of expanding volume of even solids, definitely of liquids and certainly of gases. Gases, the expansion is even greater, but it even happens in solids where solids will expand as they gain thermal energy, as they gain heat, or contract as they lose heat. So another way that this could have happened is if you had a glass that had really hot water in there and you dropped it into a bucket of cold water or ice water, that would be enough to break a lot of glasses. And that process is called thermal shock. By the way, this thermal expansion idea has a lot of implications. Engineers have to think about this as they design like bridges and railroads and so on because you can have a warping of a railroad or a warping of a bridge because of thermal expansion. And thermal expansion also comes into play when we think about global warming and climate change. So as the polar ice caps melt, the sea level rises. But not only that, the sea level rises because it's absorbing more energy from the sun. We're trapping in more heat. The ocean itself is expanding as a liquid. You can get liquids that will actually expand. They don't expand anywhere near as much as gases do, but they do expand and contract a bit, as will solids. 
So in any case, this is our introductory lesson into thermodynamics as a unit. And thermodynamics is the study of energy and heat and how they all interrelate. So you could think of it as energy flow throughout the entire universe. It's really important. And the study of this led to refrigerators and air conditioners, for instance, which are really, really important for human life. If you think about it in the history of humanity, refrigeration is a recent technological development. In any case, we're going to get into a lot more topics, so please stick around. If you have any comments down below, please let me know, and I hope you all have a great day. Take care.